Next year, will I get B.Tech CSE and a top college? That one thought is driving your exam prep, board prep, entrance coaching, everything. And you're not alone. Lacks of students across the country are preparing for the same. Because everyone around you says that it is the smartest and safest choice. But here's one question no one is actually asking you. What if you're actually not built for it? What if the real stress does not come during exams, but during placement seasons when you have to sit for back-to-back -back interviews? And you realize you still can't code confidently, your resume looks empty and you are nowhere close to being job ready. Studies show that most students don't choose computer science engineering out of passion. They choose it because of peer pressure, simply because everyone else is doing that. Could that be the reason why so many of them end up unemployed after four years? In this video, we'll explore the reality of software engineering, why it's not for everyone and how you can find out if it is truly the right path for you before it's too late. Nobody sits you down and says, you must choose BTEC CS. But look around, every other post talks about coding and AI. College brochures highlight highest placements in computer science engineering. Friends obsess over package numbers. And career advisors often recommend it as the safest, smartest and the most future-proof path. Slowly, without even realizing, you also start believing in it. CSE is the obvious choice, not because you reflected on your own strengths, but because the crowd made you feel so. It's not peer pressure in the traditional sense. It's something quieter, something deeper, a belief planted by repetition, not reflection. And the risk? When you make a big life choice based on trends, not alignment, you end up chasing skills that don't excite you, struggling with concepts that don't click, and feeling like you're constantly falling behind. Take Shankar Mahadevan. He studied computer science, worked as a software engineer, did everything right, but he soon realized that tech wasn't where he truly thrived. He made a bold choice and switched paths. Today, he is one of India's most celebrated musicians, not because music is much better than tech, but because he chose what truly fit him, not what looked safe. There are many such stories of people who followed the safe path only to realize later that it wasn't really their path. But not everyone needs to make a dramatic shift like Shankar. But before you follow the crowd, pause and ask yourself, is this really where I'll thrive? Because it's not about whether you are truly capable, but it's about whether the path is truly yours. There was a time, maybe around 10 years ago, when a software company would just choose you because of potential. You'd join a team, get trained for weeks and months and slowly grow into your job. Even if you struggled a bit, they would give you time because loyalty was highly valued. But that world doesn't exist anymore. Today, the tech world isn't just moving fast, it's tearing forward. Since the AI boom, thousands of startups have launched globally, each racing to build the next big thing. Every month, there is a new framework, a new tool, a new expectation. If you can't keep up, you will fall behind. Even giants like TCS, once symbols of job security, are laying off employees. Why? Because even they cannot afford to wait. Companies don't want freshers anymore. They want freshers who can perform like pros. There is no warm-up period anymore. There is no slow onboarding. There is no room to figure out things later. Companies now hire only those who can contribute from day one, write code, solve problems, and ship features. If you are not ready to perform immediately, you will simply not be the one who they will pick. And this isn't just an industry trend. It is the standard set by the best. Even Google, the goat of the software industry, expects you to deliver from day one. As Laszlo Bock, former head of people operations at Google, writes it in his book, Work Rules. It's an error ever to compromise on hiring quality. A bad hire is toxic, not only destroying their own performance, but also dragging down the performance, morale and energy of those around them. This isn't just a quote, it's a mindset. It means companies are extremely selective. They don't hire just based on potential alone, they hire based on readiness. Bok also shares, hire by committee, set objective standards in advance, never compromise and periodically check if your new hires are better than your old ones. If they're not, Stop hiring until you find better people. You will move slowly in the short term, but you will have much stronger teams in the end. It's not just Google. This mindset has become the norm of the software industry today. And that's exactly why so many graduates remain jobless because they are not job ready yet. But how do you actually become job ready? What does it really take to stand out in the tech world today? To be job ready, you need to be practicing coding regularly, build real projects, learn new technologies, sharpen your creativity, improve your community, 
communication, solve problems that don't have obvious answers and adapt constantly. But here's the problem with most engineering colleges. They are not keeping pace with the tech industry. It's not just our opinion. Even the Niti Aayog report reflects this. In response to the dynamic shifts in technology, industry demands and societal changes, government colleges must undertake a comprehensive reassessment and restructuring of their course offerings. This entails updating curricula to reflect the latest knowledge, skills and technologies relevant to contemporary job markets while also emphasizing critical thinking, creativity and adaptability. Moreover, integrating digital literacy and technology-based learning into course content is essential to equip students with the necessary skills for the digital age. The lack of these is a major challenge. So it's clear your college curriculum doesn't make you job ready. It moves slowly, it skips what matters and no one is going to close that gap for you. If you want to stand out, you have to put in the hours outside the classroom. Burn the late nights, give up the weekends, build projects, take online courses, join hackathons, apply for internships, face rejections, learn, improve. That's the real path and if you don't want to do that, if you want to choose comfort over challenge, if you want to wait till you're taught rather than figuring things out yourself, then you will be under pressure. You might regret it. You might argue, I'm already working hard, I'm already putting effort for the exams. But here's the truth. The exam race is not the real world race. In exams, you prepare for questions that have already been asked. You study patterns, memorize formulae, follow a syllabus. You know what's coming and you get marks for recalling it. But in the real world, there is no syllabus, no fixed paper. You face problems no one has solved before and no one tells you how to solve them. You don't get marks, you get judged on outcomes, on what you build, how fast you adapt and how well you think. That's not academic pressure, that's performance pressure and unless you train for that not just study for exams you won't be ready and that's why CSE isn't the right choice for everyone you might still feel CSE just feels right for me and maybe it is but are you sure you're choosing it for the right reasons and that's why we build this quiz to help you make that decision with clarity not confusion it helps you reflect on how you think learn and solve problems and whether that matches the reality of a CSE career most students never pause to ask these questions until it's too late but you still can just take this quiz five minutes of your life could save you four years of regret